this is a whole video about carbon fiber. All right, so history of carbon fiber briefly. I don't know, it's been around since the 50s. Um, it's strands of carbon that uh, are extremely strong, very brittle, uh, very useful in knife making uh, materials, including handles. And I want to show in this video uh, the types of carbon fiber that are common right now. You can play with this stuff like any other material. Uh, it becomes an art form. So what I just kind of want to do is go into some of the major patterns that you're going to see. Now, the way that the fibers lay, you can either use the strands uniformly where they cross each other in a consistent pattern. And so it's, more, it's called a basket uh fi carbon fiber pattern this uh zt0990 is a really good example of the weave pattern that you can get in carbon fiber okay it's very plain it's very uniform structurally it's stronger than any other version but with what i use my knife for you're never going to tell a difference i think uh, it's purely aesthetic. The difference in tensile strength is going to be negligible. This is the Freeman 451 Flipper. This is less finished, so it's more of a raw look. All it is is impregnated with epoxy and then sanded and milled. Milled, sanded, whatever order. Um, but you can kind of see that weave that's real uniform. These inserts, by the way, are replaceable. They're awesome. You can get different colors and stuff. All right, this is the Benchmade 940. I think probably the best example of a weave pattern for the carbon fiber. So you can kind of see what I mean. It's just, it's a pattern that's laid on top of itself. It, it doesn't really deviate much. Now, my preference after I started getting into carbon fiber was definitely marbled carbon fiber. And so I'm going to show you the difference here. The marbled carbon fiber on something like the Godson from Protec, you can see the swirl. So they've taken those fibers suspended in epoxy and they've swirled them. Now, the trick is to not get voids, and this example has no voids, almost none. O almost all carbon fiber inevitably will have voids, but just look at how that shines in the light, how it swirls. Every single one is unique, very different, again, than just the weave, right? Okay, another example of the marbled carbon fiber is this Buck Sprint. So these are both considered marble carbon fiber, but they have a very different look to it. That, by the way, I'm going to get to in a sec, but it almost has a shred look to it, whereas this is more of a swirled. I love, in terms of marbled carbon fiber... I find no better than what Buck is presently using on the Sprint series. So deep and beautiful. And again, the trick is with these voids, as you're spinning these fibers around, you're making these pockets that are missing the carbon but just have the epoxy. And um, a quality scale is going to consist of enough uniformity and enough thickness that... Uh, you won't get many voids. This does have just a few voids here or there that you can see. Um, this is also a good time to say I like full carbon, uh, carbon fiber scales. Um, this is not calling Spyderco out in any way. They make very good knives. I love their company in every way. But I just don't go for the, the peel-plied carbon fiber, which is where they just stick a... a a uh, almost like a very strong sticker of carbon fiber over a G10 backing, and with 
with the knives I like, they just inside, if you can see, have nested steel liners usually, or sandwich steel liners, I'll show you in a sec. But enough uh, strength for structural integrity that you don't have to worry about a full slab of carbon fiber being too brittle. Um, I know why Spyderco does it, but if I'm spending the money on going carbon fiber, I want a big slab of carbon fiber. That's it. That's just what I get. Okay, another uh, marbled carbon fiber that I don't like as much, but just a good example is the Civivi Elementum. It is a budget knife. Um, I like it outside. The marbled carbon fiber looks beautiful outside. Inside, it's very hard to see, and it's almost like there's just not enough gloss to the finish. But this is another example of marbled carbon fiber. I have one example of shred carbon fiber. Shred is where they just went everywhere with the pattern, right? They just threw it to the wind and let the pieces, the small strands, not uh, elongated strands, just fall where they are. And this one is also mixed with copper. They had a, a CVV Insight. They had a, a gold version as well. Um, lots of voids in this. You can see them everywhere. And you can actually see them straight down through to the steel liners. These are budget. Uh, the Civivi Elementum and the Civivi Insight, I, I like them for the price. I figure for the price, why not go for the better materials? But with the other knives that I have on the table, the uh, carbon fiber quality is much better. And I've actually seen this same... Uh, pattern reused on other knives uh okay lastly i'm gonna say exotic um this is a these are patterns that they just kind of really have a niche they're 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 very uniform they're high quality i'm just going to give you an example here uh to show you what i'm talking about but there are a few different versions Phytanium is who I think popularized these more exotic patterns. This is what Phytanium calls the raindrop pattern. Knives Plus calls it their Damascus pattern. And this is not marbled car carbon fiber, but it, it's kind of swirled still, you see? And they've done it in such a way to be uniform where... I think the titanium description is really nice. It does very much look like raindrops. And I can see what Knives Plus is saying with the Damascus. But um, I said on another video, some of these I think are coming, they're, they're pretty clear coming from the same place. Um, the Knives Plus version, I believe, comes from the same place as Phytanium. Uh, but they do call it something different and uh, apparently flare the lanyard tube just a little bit to make it easier to put on an install. But this is what I would consider a boutique carbon fiber. It's a little bit more expensive. You're getting um, a unique pattern that doesn't exist on just anything else. And so I, I believe you're going to see, you already see a lot of different kind of niche patterns here, like I was saying, but I think this will be more common going forward with some of the major manufacturers as it becomes uh, available in larger quantities. So that's a good explanation of carbon fiber options if you're in the market for a carbon fiber pocket knife. I love them. They're not going to have the same um, ability to take punishment like a, a G10 or a, an aluminum. Uh, so if you drop them, they're definitely expected to chip. Expect bad things to happen when you pick the knife back up. They are very strong. They're super strong, but that makes them just very brittle. So they don't handle drop, shock, impact in, in any way very, very well. But they are sure pretty to look at, right? All right, guys, let me know what you think. Take care.